really penetrated a number of uh, states quite heavily, which is what you're seeing in the revenue growth. We continue to build on that foundation, and we do anticipate some, uh, some additional acquisitions on that side, which is something that we hope to talk about here in the next few days. Hey, everybody. It's Stuart Smith with smallcapvoice.com, and I'm excited to bring you once again Dalrada Financial Corporation. And today, we're speaking with another key member of that team, and that is the Chief Financial Officer of the company, Kyle McCollum. As you may know from our earlier interviews, if you've been had a chance to watch them. Dalrada Financial Corporation is traded on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol DFCO. And we're speaking with the CFO today because of course, well, the company put out some great news and a recent filing and we want to follow it up by getting his insights. So Kyle, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for making time for Small Cap Voice. Yeah, it's Stuart. Pleased to be on and uh, appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Thanks for making time. So Kyle, as I pointed out there, the filing is out there. People can pick it up at sec.gov. They can go to OTC markets, put in that ticker symbol DFCO. They'll find the complete filing. But you know, you're know, you the company CFO, and i got to imagine that you're pleased by a couple of things that jump off the page or the pages, I should say, of your 10Q. The balance sheet improvements specifically uh, the decrease in the liabilities, those were big. Do you want to go over that and some of the drivers behind that for us? Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, I know you've spoken to to Brian in some prior uh, interviews. And, you know, during this, this fiscal year, we focused on a few things. One, really uh, focusing on our existing core products and services, two, cutting costs, and three, cleaning up the balance sheet. Um, uh, I feel that this quarter was was very important on all three of those elements. In regards to the balance sheet, we converted $13 million of related party principal and interest to preferred equity. And with that, we, we reestablished a, a fairly large $8 million uh, positive net equity. And why that's important, Stuart, is uh, as we've discussed, we're, we're really preparing for... Uh, a move forward to to a higher listing. This is a, an important checkbox for that. So uh, we're pleased to do that. And uh, as long as we continue doing what uh, we're set on a daily basis, we should see some further improvements as time goes on. Well, speaking of further improvements, when we look at the filing closer, we can see that Genefic brought in the lion's share of the revenue for this quarter. But we can also see Dalrada's got its other segments primed for some serious growth. And we've heard from the CEO, as you pointed out, and I pointed out, Brian Bonner, uh, several times discussing Dalrada climate technology, amongst others. Looking beyond this quarter, you know, if you could give us some of the areas that you might be excited about potential growth in the next few quarters. Of course, of course. Uh, as you stated, we're, we're very pleased with uh, the performance of Genefic and its trajectory. However, uh, we are we, we remain very bullish on uh, additional Dalrada segments, specifically Dalrada technology. Um, you know, our the public and our investors are very well aware of the, the foundation of that segment, which is the heat pumps. Uh, I think it's important to note that the, uh, the commercial heat pump is something that we've we've developed. It's patent pending, leading edge, and uh, most importantly, it it takes time to to commercialize, and uh, you know it's taken time to to really do things right on the back end so we can really fulfill market penetration. Um, and uh, I do feel that we are on on the precipice of that. We've uh, signed on some some very good distribution agreements. Those take time as well. I think there's some education in the market that's taking place. And um, with all that said, I do think that we're going to see some of that movement over the next few months. Uh, additionally, we are uh, ramping up our home heat pump uh, business as well. Again, we should see some movement over the next few months, which is exciting. Yeah, and I should point out to the viewers and the listeners today that if you go to that website, dalrada.com, you will find some tremendous videos, some great blogs and articles about heat pumps. I want you to go ahead and get socialized with this company. They do a really good job on Twitter, as well as YouTube, keeping you in the know on how this heat pump market is really evolving 
so rapidly. It's already entrenched in Europe, as we pointed out, but it's the fastest growing segment here in the United States as well. Well, let's go back to Genefic, though. So when we look at the drivers behind that revenue, which is substantial, again, uh, quarter to quarter, the growth has been impressive. I saw some things on Twitter yesterday. Um, you know, again, what do you think of the drivers? Let's talk about what you see uh, the guy crunching the numbers as what's pushing Genefic along. Yeah, I think uh, in order to answer the question, just taking a step back in the history of Genefic itself and the healthcare business, we have a fantastic executive team on that side, and we really built the backbone of that segment on the diagnostic side of, of uh, the healthcare, specifically COVID. We saw a, a fantastic opportunity with the team we had in place, and we really drove that up over fiscal 22 and 23. As we entered into 23, we knew that it really was opportunistic and we knew we needed to pivot to something that was gonna be more long-term for the company and the shareholders. So at that time, we did a fair amount of market research and we saw a fantastic opportunity in the pharmaceutical business, specifically on the specialty pharmacy side. So in, in fiscal 23, we purchased our first pharmacy we immediately began to get the credentialing for the special specialty side of, of the business. We've uh, really penetrated a number of uh, uh, states uh, quite heavily, which is what you're seeing in the revenue growth. We continue to build on that that foundation, and um, we uh, we we do anticipate some some additional um, acquisitions on that side, which is something that uh, we hope to uh, talk about here in the next few days. Well, very good. I want to thank you for your time today. Once again, Kyle, again, the CFO of Dalrada Financial Corporation. So any closing thoughts about these numbers, about this specific queue that was filed this week? Uh, anything you'd like to leave with your potential investors and, of course, your existing shareholders? Yes, of course. Um, again, the revenue growth is always exciting. Um, we, you know, that's that's something that that we, we strive for on a, on a quarter to quarter basis, year to year basis. Um, and of course, you know, Genefic has been an important element to that. And we hope to, to see the same growth on the climate technology space as well as manufacturing. However, I do want to highlight, which I feel is very important for the quarter, which is the uh, reduction in the operating loss. Something that, that Brian and I have spoken about, we focused on with the cost cuts and really, really focusing on our cash positions. And, um, you know, the uh, the quarter had the lowest quarterly loss since uh, fiscal 2021, where we had a total revenue of 3.4 million. This quarter had a revenue alone of 10.3. So, you know, I think that is is an important thing to note um, in regards to to where we're headed. And if we keep our heads down and do our job, we are hoping to uh, hit hit you know the profitability button, and again uh, you know get to the next level. Well, thanks again, Kyle. It was wonderful meeting with you and speaking with you. We look forward to touching base with you again in the near future as more great results for the company hit the bottom line. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate it, Stuart. Thank you so much. All right, for Kyle McCollum, this is Stuart Smith saying thanks so much for tuning in. And once again, before you go, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the like button, and if you have any questions for Kyle or Brian, leave them in the comments section. We'll be sure to get to them in our next interview. Thanks for tuning in.